Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to do a basic setup and coding for an ultrasonic distance sensor. So ultrasonic distance sensors can be very valuable for Arduino projects because it gives a relatively accurate reading of how far away a physical object is from your project. So you're able to put an ultrasonic distance sensor on something, let's say an Arduino vehicle, and then depending upon how close the vehicle is to another physical object, you can then set uh, if else statements on what the vehicle should do. So maybe if the vehicle is getting close uh, to, to a physical object, let's say the physical object is a foot away, then maybe you want the Arduino vehicle to start turning very slowly. So you want, to, want it to start turning out of the way of the obstacle. On the other hand, maybe if the vehicle is within six inches of that object, you want the vehicle to turn very quickly. So the cool part about the ultrasonic sensor is that you can set parameters. So you can say, if something is two feet away, do X. If something is one foot away, do Y. If something is six inches away, do Z. And oh golly golly, if something is one inch away, absolutely do L right now, right? That is what makes the ultrasonic distance sensors valuable as sensors, unlike something like the in, uh, infrared obstacle avoidance sensors, where with them, basically, they have a bubble. If something gets within the bubble, then, then the vehicle will react, or the Arduino vehicle will react. But if the object is out of the bubble, then it won't react. You don't actually, you don't have the same accuracy, you don't have the same precision that you do with an ultrasonic distance sensor. So that's why these sensors can be very valuable because you can set in different parameters for different distances and then and then your project will do whatever you've coded for so let's go over to the workbench show, so I can show you the basic components of this particular project uh, and then we'll code it and we'll show you how it works so here are the functional components that you're going to need for this particular project uh, as always we're using the basic Arduino Uno board so you can use another Arduino board but this is our, our standard default for when we're doing these projects we're using a breadboard here now it's important to understand you can actually connect the ultrasonic distance sensor to your Arduino board simply using jumper wires without using a breadboard but one of the things I like about the breadboard is the fact that I can put this just directly into the breadboard and it actually gives you a stand. Uh, again, when you're doing these projects, you're gonna run into stupid little problems such as, um, okay, how do, I, how do I get it to stand up? And so one of the nice things with the breadboards is you can simply just slot that directly in the breadboard and now not only can you wire to it, but you've actually got a stand uh, so you can work with the, the sensor and it makes it a lot easier. Uh, and then finally, of course, we've got the ultrasonic sensor. Now it is important, the ultrasonic sensor that I'm showing you today is the HC-SR04. So there are different ultrasonic sensors out there, such as this ultrasonic sensor. Um, I forget which model this is, but this is a different ultrasonic sensor. You'll notice the uh, HC-SR04 has four pins on it, and this particular ultrasonic sensor has five pins on it. Uh, so it will work uh, slightly differently. So this is one thing to remember whenever you're dealing with sensors. There are a lot of sensors out there where where basically the technology they use is the same. So you'll see this with infrared sensors too, where you'll go out and you'll buy an infrared sensor and the infrared technology part is the same, but then the actual board, the actual module may be different. And so then you may need to wire it and code it slightly differently. So this is just one of those things to keep in mind. So if you're gonna be doing this particular project, put that to the side, go for the HC hyphen SR04. This is going to be the module that we're using. So these are the main functional components to it. Put those to a side and then this is the actual project itself and it's it's a very 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 simple project. So if you uh, if you pull off your ultrasonic sensor on the back of it or possibly on the front of it it will show you what the pins are uh, if your particular sensor does not have this uh, then then you may just have to go to uh, the documentation and take a look but these pins should be the same so basically you've got ground on one side so you have ground you have echo, you have trigger, and you have VCC. So ground and VCC, they're going to be plugged into ground, is going to be plugged into the ground on your Arduino board. VCC is going to be plugged into the five volt on your Arduino board. And then the trigger and echo, they will go to your digital pins. 
And then all you're gonna do is make sure you line this up properly. And now this is literally everything you need uh, to, to basic to, to build this simple little project. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code to see how this works. So here we are. This is the code that we're going to be using for this particular project. It is important to remember with this particular project is we're not going to trigger any physical events. We're not turning on LEDs or turning on buzzers or anything like that. All we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading from the serial monitor. So what this shows you is that the sensor can detect distance and it can turn that distance into the value for a variable. Going into other projects in the future, we will then be able to test against the value of that variable for if, else, if, else statement. Uh, and then actually be able to do something based off of that number. But for this simple project, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be printing out to a serial monitor. So if we go up here, the first thing, of course, that we need to do is we need to define the digital pin. So we have the trigger pin and we have the echo pin. So pound define trigger pin goes to digital pin eight, pound define echo pin goes to digital pin nine. So that tells the Arduino board where, where these pins are on the Arduino itself. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna to have to create uh, three variables. We're going to do a long for duration. So there are different uh, variable types when you're dealing with Arduinos, uh, when numbers are concerned. So you have int, you have float, and you have long. So an int is, is a whole number uh, between 32,000 something and negative 32,000 something, right? So 10 is an int, 32,000 is an int, negative 32,000 is an int. Uh, float, float is a decimal. So 10.1 is a float, 1,000.2 is a float, uh, 30,000. 1,000.5 is a float. What long is, long is a number that's larger than an int. Um, so basically, if you need to be able to store a whole number that's larger than 32,000, then what you're going to do is you're going to have to have a long variable type. So for the duration here, uh, we're going to have a long variable type. And so we're going to it's called long, and then we're going to create the variable duration. Then the next two variables that we're going to be creating are floats. So again, decimal points. So we're going to do a float for distance in centimeters, float for distance in inches. So what's going to happen is we're going to create the value uh, for the variable duration, and then we're going to turn that value into centimeters and into inches in the code below. Then all we do is we go down here, we set up the environment. So we're gonna do pin mode, trigger pin. So the trigger pin is going to send the ultrasonic uh, signal out. And so we make that output. And we do pin mode, echo pin. So echo pin is receiving the ultrasonic uh, signal. And so we're going to set that to input and then serial.begin 9600. So we can actually read from the serial monitor. Then when we go down here, this is just the basic code that you're gonna need to put in uh, if you're going to be dealing with ultrasonic sensors. So what we have is digital write, trigger pin low, delay microseconds. So it's not delay, because uh, delay is in milliseconds. This is in microseconds, so this is faster. So delay microseconds two, so it delays for two, uh, two microseconds. Then it goes to digital write, trigger pin high, delay microseconds 10 for 10 microseconds, digital write, trigger pin low. And then what we're gonna have here is we are now going to set the value for the variable duration. So the value for the variable duration equals pulse in function echo pin high. And so this, this, is how we are able to get the value of the variable duration, and then we can actually start working with that value. So once we know what the value of duration is, we then need to turn that into something that is useful to us. So what's useful to us is distance in centimeters or distance in inches. So what we're going to do for centimeters, so float this variable, distance centimeters equals duration times 0 0.034 divided by two. And that is going to give us how many centimeters away the, the object is. Then distance inches equals duration times uh, 0.0133 divided by two. So that will give us how many inches away an object is. And so that's the important thing. When, again, whenever we're dealing with Arduino, many times we are going to get a value for a variable, but that, that value itself isn't doesn't mean anything to us again duration duration isn't something i can work with i need either centimeters or i need inches i can work with centimeters i can work with inches just having that 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 duration number doesn't mean anything to me 
So then all we're going to go do is we're going to go down here and then we're going to serial print everything out. So you can see it. So serial.print, so distance. So it's going to say distance uh, colon space, and then it will print the distance in centimeters, the value for distance CM. Then we're going to print out a couple of spaces, put CM, put another couple of spaces, put hyphen, put another couple of spaces. Again, just basic formatting stuff. You got to put it in the code. Then we're going to do serial.print distance, the, the value for the variable distance inch. So we're going to, that's going to print out. Then we're going to serial print line, so print LN. What's going to happen is it's going to print this out, and then it's going to go to a new line. And then, you know, basically we put a couple of inches there, or we put a couple of spaces there. Then we say inches, and then it'll go to the next line. The next thing that we do here is we're going to do a delay. So the delay here is in milliseconds. Uh, so we're going to say 1,000 milliseconds. This means one second. Now, with this delay, you can put this delay to whatever the hell you want. I put it to one second so that I can actually read what the hell's going by on the screen. So it's important to understand with something like this, again, if this is going to be an autonomous vehicle, you would want the, the delay to be very low. You'd want the delay to be maybe 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds, something like that because you want the loop to go through as quickly as possible. The thing is, is when I'm actually trying to physically read what, what's going uh, on the screen, I need the output to be slower than that. So that's why I up it to 1,000 milliseconds or one second. So with that, all you do is you then upload um, to the board. Everything should go through. And then with that, we can go to Tools and we can go to Serial Monitor. And we can see the distance the object is away from, uh, from, from the, uh, the ultrasonic sensor. Going to this shot, I think, I think everything will be a little bit easier to understand. So we have our ultrasonic sensor here. And again, when I put my, my hand right in front of the ultrasonic sensor, you can see how close it is. And so it's reading eh, four to five centimeters away and about two inches. Now, one of the things that you have to realize with the ultrasonic sensor is different types of material will reflect the ultrasonic signal differently. So that's one of the reasons why I say the ultrasonic sensor is relatively accurate. The, the, if a material is made out of, out of different things, uh, that can affect how the signal works with ma material. So you may get different readings depending on whether you're dealing with a very hard material or maybe where you're dealing with cloth, something like that. But basically, if we go here, I mean, we can see, you know, if I put this, uh, this, uh, this box in front of it, you can see it's reading, uh, you know, about four or four and a half centimeters, about 1.6 inches. And then as I pull this away, you can see the number goes up and up. Um, one of the things, too, to be thinking about when you're dealing with the ultrasonic sensor is to realize that what's happening is basically it's sending an ultrasonic sound wave out one. It's reflecting off the object and coming back. So you have to be thinking about how the sensor actually works. And so if it's going and reflecting, one of the things you have to think about is what happens if it starts hitting, hitting the object at an angle, right? So, so the signal goes out, it hits the object at an angle, and then it veers off into a different direction. So that's why we're now starting to get weird weird settings or weird readings. And so this is one of those things you're gonna have to be thinking about whenever you're dealing with sensors is what are their limitations? How do they interact with different materials? How do they uh, interact when they're looking at objects from different angles? And then you're gonna have to co you're gonna have to figure out how to design your project appropriately so that you don't run into problems there. But that's basically the overall of how the ultrasonic sensor works, uh, how to uh, how to build the project, and then how to code for it. So there you go. You learned a little bit about the ultrasonic sensors. Uh, like most stuff with the Arduino world, it's really easy to set up. It's really easy to code for. What becomes complicated is when you try to build this into a much larger overall project and then figure out you know, what sensors take precedence over other sensors, creating those if, else if statements, doing all those kinds of things. Basically, that's the important thing you have to understand with technology. A lot of people get confused when they're learning technology is that each individual thing is very simple. Each individual thing, eh, it takes you 10 or 20 minutes to learn.
<laughs> where it gets complicated is you then learn a hundred or a thousand different things and then figure out how to build a product based off of all those things and having them interact together. That's that's where it gets really complicated. So uh, basically these little sensors are absolutely great. If you are going to be using them for projects though, the thing that I would recommend is that you experiment with them and you play with them and you realize how they interact with the world. Again, when they're, when they're looking, when they're looking at physical objects, again, how do those objects have to be to make sure that they're actually uh, seen by the sensor, uh, so on and so forth, because that's one of the, the, the things that you'll run into with these sensors is they work when they work per when when they work exactly how they're designed they work perfectly but as with everything you know if if they're doing something a little bit differently you may get some really weird uh, readings because of that and then you have to figure out how to design your overall project to be able to compensate for that so again if you're going to be uh, using ultrasonic sensors on something like an autonomous vehicle what you realize is having a single sensor on that autonomous vehicle probably is not going to be a great idea you know if you're going to be using ultrasonic sensors maybe you need an array of three ultrasonic sensors or an array of five ultrasonic sensors so all those sensors can be reading from different angles you can bring in five or more different inputs and then figure out what the vehicle should do from there so these are some of the things to be thinking about if you're going to be using the ultrasonic sensors but they're a great little tool uh, and we'll definitely be using them in many projects to come so as always i enjoyed uh, doing this particular video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.